Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Good, I hope. So, as of writing the script for this video, we're almost at Halloween. And while I know for a fact this video is going to probably come out after Halloween, I wanted to do a horror-themed video for the season anyway. So, uh, happy late Halloween, I guess, probably. I don't know. Anyway, with the popularity of those Rivals wishlists I've done, I wanted to try and do something a little different, you know, to make it more in line with the season. So we're going to do one for Dead by Daylight. You know, it's an easy video to kind of cook up within a week, so yeah, we're going to do it. I'm also a huge fan of horror as a genre, and I've wanted an excuse to fanboy about some icons of horror for a while now. So this feels like a perfect excuse to do just that. Since this is obviously going to be a bit different from the Rivals wishlist I've done, I'll go over how I'm thinking I'm going to do the list. While Dead by Daylight normally does chapters with one killer and one survivor, I'll only be covering one license per character. So, hypothetical example, if I talked about Springtrap as a killer, I wouldn't then talk about Michael Afton as a survivor. This is mainly to show variety in the different licenses I want. That being said, there is one exception, and I'll explain that when we get there, but don't worry about that until then. I also won't be going super in-depth with anything concept-wise like powers or perks. If I have a rough idea for something, I'll definitely mention it, but this is more of a license wish list than a concept video. Oh, and uh, speaking of FNAF, since it is now confirmed to be coming to the game in the future, I won't be covering it anywhere. But do know I really hope the killer is Springtrap and that we get a yellow rabbit skin for him because by the gods I love that design! Anyway, I want to fanboy about some horror characters now, so let's just get started. Alright, so this one's kind of a given, so we'll get him out the way immediately. But in my opinion, Jason is the definitive slasher. And I know this varies from person to person, like some people may think of Michael, or some people may think of Freddy. But at least for me, when I think of the slasher genre, I immediately think of Jason Voorhees. Jason's already had his own game similar to Dead by Daylight, and truthfully, back in the day, I even preferred the Friday the 13th game way before I jumped ship to Dead by Daylight. A anyway. He's been in copyright hell for like a decade, but recently, he finally became free. And he's, you know, finally able to be used in things again. Like, for example, he's in Multiverses, which is ironically the only reason I went back to playing that game. Anyway, so I think it's prime time for him to come to a game like this. I'm not super confident on any ideas for a killer power for Mr. Voorhees, but I was kind of thinking he'd have a rage meter of some sort, you know. Amongst all the slashers, Jason is known as the Brute, at least in my opinion. I know Leatherface is kind of a Brute, but when I think of the big angry guy, I think of Jason, you know? Oh, and obviously he'd need some form of teleport, that's, that's kind of his thing, you know? Oh, and obviously we need Camp Crystal Lake as a map in the game. Can you imagine how sick that would be? Anyway, on to the next one. Honestly, I'm pretty surprised Isaac isn't already in the game as a survivor. Like, to me, he feels like the perfect character for, you know, survivor-only chapter, like Alan or Laura Croft. Anyway, Dead Space is one of the all-timers for horror games, in my humble opinion. And let's be honest here, Isaac is no stranger to crossovers. Look, if he could be in Fortnite and all these skating games and whatnot, he could be in Dead by Daylight. Also, little side note, I'd love to see the USG Ishimura as a map. Imagine how cool it would be. You could have the exit gates be like, you know, open to the, uh, oh, what's, what's the word? The dock area. Look, I'm gonna be real with you, I'm improving this part right now, but just, you, you could see the vision, right? Like, none of the other space-adjacent maps have really scratched that itch for me. Like, the one that's with uh, the Singularity and then the Nostromo, that's the word I was looking for. We, we haven't been on a spaceship yet. I want a map that's just on a spaceship. That would be sick. Anyway, uh, it's hard to nail down perks for Isaac. I I've mentioned this on Twitter, but I used to be a huge killer main, and I didn't really touch Survivor up until recently, so I'm still kind of new to this part. But since he's an engineer, maybe he could do something with the generators? Or maybe to reflect the Kinesis module, maybe let him pull down pallets from a distance? I don't know, something like that. If anyone has any good ideas of how to do perks for Isaac, go ahead and tell me in the comments. Like I said, I'm super new to the survivor side of things, so uh, if anyone who is much smarter than me has any good ideas, please let me know. Okay, so I'll admit I was actually pretty split on Art the Clown up until recently. 
Like, I'll be honest here, I didn't like Terrifier 1 at all. It was a cool showcase of practical effects, and Art himself in that is great. But a lot of the movie kind of felt a bit too, uh... Icky, I guess would be the word, and I don't mean in regards to the gore. In fact, as long as it has nothing to do with fingers, I'm like really tolerant for horror movie gore. In fact, I'm usually the guy who's trying to figure out how they pulled off the effect more than anything. My problem with Terrifier 1 is more of a tone thing. Like, in my opinion, it leans way too much into grimy torture porn. I totally respect anyone who does like the movie, just for the record, you know, different strokes, different folks. But it just wasn't my thing. Terrifier 2, on the other hand, is way more my speed, right? It has an actual plot, it has decently developed characters, and it actually feels like a slasher movie to me. It's also incredibly goofy at some points, and I love that sort of thing for horror movies. I haven't seen Terrifier 3 yet, but that looks way more up my alley than even 2 was. So, uh, needless to say, I'm genuinely excited to go see it. Anyway, enough of my thoughts on the movies. Anyway, regardless of how anyone feels about the franchise as a whole, you can't really deny that Art is like THE modern slasher icon. The last time a horror movie character got as popular as him is, was probably Ghostface if I'm being real with you. I can't think of any other horror movie character in the last decade or two that's had the same level of popularity. And that fact alone makes me think that Art would- he almost deserves to be in Dead by Daylight at this point. Anyway, for Art's power, I won't take credit here, but I saw a concept video on it where someone suggested that Art should have a mechanic similar to Vecna, but instead of spells, it's different weapons. I don't remember who made it as of writing this and definitely not as, you know, voicing it, but if I can find that video while I'm in the editing phase, I'll credit here and link it in the description. Alright, I can't overstate how much I love Hellboy. Genuinely one of my all-time favorite characters to come out of comic books. Like, he's just, he's just so cool, man! Anyway, while I consider Hellboy to be a horror-adjacent property, up until recently, I felt it would have been a bit harder to justify his inclusion as a survivor. However, thanks to Castlevania, D&D, &D, and now Tomb Raider, I no longer feel it's a stretch to want him in. As I've mentioned, I'm a killer main through and through. That's why most of the killer entries on this list are going to be way longer than survivors. And while the last year has been good for me in regards to survivors because of Alan Wake and Trevor Belmont, let me tell you this right now. If they added Hellboy as a survivor, I would 100% be spending just as much time on Survivor as I do Killer. Now for any perks for him, I have no idea, so I'm just gonna say it. Screw it. Give him a gun. Just make one of his perks gun. You can shoot the Killer once. Have fun. Anyway, uh, jokes aside though, I'm sure someone could think of something way cooler. But yeah, anyway, give me Hellboy, please, I beg of you. Welcome to the family, son. So, when the first Resident Evil chapter was announced, I did a stream predicting who the killer was going to be. And while Nemesis was in fact my most wanted pick, second up was Jack Baker, who would be so insanely funny to have running around during a match. Like, imagine hearing this while in a trial. Ethan! 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 Anyway, I know we already have two Resident Evil chapters, but suspiciously, we don't really have anything to represent RE7 or Village. And while I'm sure people would love Lady Dimitrescu in game, I'm one of those people. I'd personally prefer Jack. That being said, it is mainly because I do think Jack is such a fun character, and like I said earlier, I'd love to hear him spouting nonsense while playing as him. As for power, probably something mold related, I honestly don't have a solid idea for this one, but Weapon, give him those, the, the chainsaw scissors. That would be sick. Considering this is the second time Frank's popped up on a wish list of mine, I think it's fairly obvious I'm a fan of Dead Rising 1. And exactly like Isaac, he's perfect for a solo survivor chapter. Like, sure, having one of the psychopaths as a killer would be cool, but at the end of the day, Frank should be the main attraction in a hypothetical Dead Rising chapter. Honestly, for most of my survivor picks, I just thought of characters who would get me to play more survivor. And I would play so much Frank. Like I mentioned before, I'm still new to playing survivor, so perk ideas aren't something I'm going to say I'm good at. 
So keep that in mind for what I'm about to say. But imagine a quote-unquote joke perk that lets you take pictures for some extra blood points. Think of how Dead Rising's PP mechanic works. I'd unironically be so into that, just to take pictures of killers as they're chasing me. That, that sounds like so much fun, man. Anyway, I'll also take any excuse to say I've covered Wars, you know, in a match. So, uh, please, thank you, Capcom. Unironically, something from Junji Ito has probably been one of my most wanted licenses for this game for a while now. And while I did put down Tomei as the killer for the sake of convenience, I'd honestly be fine with anything Junji Ito. Like, I've seen a couple of people suggest Azami as kind of like a spiral curse power character, and I love that idea, I'm not gonna lie to you. Anyway, this section is short because this is actually the exception I mentioned earlier, and we're gonna talk about a survivor next that's also related to Junji Ito. Continuing off from the last pick, uh, since Kyrie is from Uzumaki and Tomei is from, well, Tomei, it's technically different stories, despite them both being from Junji Ito. Yeah, I know this is a huge technicality, so I won't take too long to talk about her. But Kyrie is the definitive Junji Ito main character in my eyes. So I think it'd be a huge shame if she wasn't at least one of the survivors in a hypothetical Junji Ito-themed chapter. I'm also going to use this spot to talk about a hypothetical Junji Ito map, right? Because by the gods... Imagine the stitched together map of different locations from different Junji Ito stories. There's, there's so much potential for Easter eggs, man. Like, have one section of the map be the row houses from Uzumaki, and then have another corner of the map be Amigara Fault. Honestly, you could probably even do Hellstar Ramina in the skybox. Just uh, kind of visualize it, right? There's so much potential here, man. A Junji Ito chapter has been rattling around in my brain since at least like 2020. So I'm kind of begging here, please. Dead by Daylight devs, behavior, if you're watching this, please, I beg of you. Honestly, out of all the killers on this list, this is the one I'm certain is coming at some point in time. I mean, the alien license is already in the game, there's a reference to Alien vs Predator with one of the Xenomorph skins already, and let's be honest here, the two franchises are linked. It's not a stretch at all to say Predator is coming in the near future. That being said, I absolutely love the Predator, man, and I can't even begin to convey how hyped I would be if he got in. The only big issue I can think of is the fact that Predator Hunting Grounds exists. But that game's been dead for some time now, and let's be real here, if Bubba can be in Dead by Daylight and his own game, so can the Predator. Little side note here, while I'm sure that the Jungle Hunter is going to be their first pick for a Predator rep, I would love it if the Feral Predator was actually going to be the killer. Like, man, I love Prey so much, that's one of my favorite Predator movies, and actually, it might even be my favorite Predator movie. Anyway, regardless though, if Jungle Hunter is the one that gets in, there's no problems for me, I love that one. But, I would hope that the Feral Predator is at least a skin. And for a power, kind of going back to Art the Clown here, but maybe a Vecna-style wet like Select for different hunting tools. Basically make him Trapper plus Wraith plus Vecna. Ah, uh, Colonel. Yeah, I'm being completely unironic with this one. Look, if Laura Croft can get in, I think Snake qualifies under the same merits, no? Jokes aside though, it seems like Behavior and Konami have a very decent relationship considering all the different Silent Hill and Castlevania content we've gotten recently. So, I can actually see Snake being added as a survivor. Besides, I love Metal Gear to death and would kill for Snake to get in. And even if it's really just for meme builds, Make all of his perks revolve around stealth. Like, maybe give him one where he can actually go prone. Does that sound overpowered to me? Yes, it does. However, it would be funny. And I'm sure you all realize this by now. If it's a funny idea, I'm going with it. Little unscripted side note here. I could actually see Metal Gear getting a full chapter with a killer as well, because you've got Psychomantis, Vamp, The Fear, or even The Sorrow. They would all work as killers. Personally, though, I'd vote Psychomantis. I'm a sucker for that guy. Anyway, point is, I think Snake has an actual shot. This might be Madman Euro talking here, but whatever. Anyway, that's my licensed wishlist for Dead by Daylight. I'm honestly kind of curious to see how this video does, because this one's kind of a last-minute Halloween special that I wanted to cook up. 
And just for the record, I've got other non-wishlist videos planned. It's just the fact, after doing those arrivals videos, I've kind of developed a format that makes these easier to make in short notice. And I've also been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight recently. So the idea came to me, I was like, why not? It'd be a fun last minute Halloween special to do. And besides, like I mentioned, I love talking horror movie stuff, so yeah. If you like this video, you should like and subscribe, it helps a lot. Or if you're looking to support the channel directly, you can now become a true supporter with the membership. Members get exclusive content such as loyalty badges, some super cool emotes, early access to new videos, and a shout out at the end of every video. Or if you're in the need of some gaming energy, go pick up some poggers and use code EUROPOGGERS at checkout, or use the link in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video, and don't forget, the crew of Dead Meat should unironically be survivors in Dead by Dale.